All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. We are live in full effect with the one and only. And I and I, I love these kind of interviews, ladies and gentlemen, because we got a fellow Canadian live on the live. Yeah. We got Ontario's finest. We got Hazardous. Yeah. How are you doing this evening? What's going on? What up? What up? What up? Crack. I got to say, doing man, immortal. what is everything like out there in the GTA, man? Because I'm on the other side of Ontario, man. So what's that COVID situation like up, up near Toronto? <laughs> It's, it's fucking, it's rough. Can I swear? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Right, right down here right now, man, we just started opening everything back up, you know what I mean? But we're getting dumped on a huge snowstorm right now, man. So if you haven't and already got, got it, it's dump, coming your way. But uh, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been rainy today. Oh, I am, man. Oh, but Bring some of that stuff down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where are you about exactly? Uh, we're, I'm in uh, Prescott, Ontario, so I'm, I'm I'm more closer to Ottawa, so I'm about 40 minutes from, oh, from wow. Ottawa. Okay, okay. But I gotta ask you, Hazardous, like taking you back to the beginning of your musical career, because you're here to talk about music and not talk about COVID. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. But I gotta ask I'm you, man, what inspired nonsense. you to get into the music industry initially? Uh, let's see. I guess it started. You know, I remember the whole mixtape phase where. You were dubbing over, you know, other people's instrumentals and whatnot. Started doing that, making mixtapes, cassette tapes, turned into CDs, and then, you know, started hustling them on uh, on the corner of uh, Young and Dundas, which is a pretty famous spot, Dundas Square. I don't know if, if you know the spot, but, um, yeah, that was 2000, 2006-ish, and then didn't really start recording any real original material until about 2010. And also, man, another amazing EP that actually came across of yours, man, is actually titled Infectious Agent EP, man. I was wondering, you tell our listeners a bit more about that. And of course, where can we actually snag ourselves a copy? Okay, so that was, I think that was in between albums. So me and a homie, uh, Chief Foresight, we, um, we collaborated and, and did this thing. Did two albums under the name uh, Dangerous Bits. And so I think it was in between albums that I dropped uh, the Infectious Agent EP. And it was just uh, random tracks that I had done with other producers. Um, yeah. And we just, we just dropped it. And uh, it's available on Bandcamp. And I think you can stream it on a bunch of sites as well. I think it's on Spotify, Apple Music, all that, all those digital platforms. And I, th- I think that actually dropped around like a 2015 criteria, man. But the song "Don't Sleep" is the one that I really drew myself to. Okay, yeah, I know the. Tr- uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, with my boy Godilla. Shout out Godilla out in PA. That's a dope track. Yeah, I remember that. Very proud of that joint. Oh, man, most Dev. I gotta say, that's some real, to my personal opinion, that's some real Canadian boom bap right there, man. I, I love I love that shit. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And, I just try to keep it old school, you know? <laughs> and also, as well, man, I noticed that you were actually a Latino MC, man, and of course, you're, you know, you're residing in the Toronto, Toronto, Ontario area. The one thing I've always wanted to know, man, because I know... Canadian hip hop, unfortunately, like it's really hard to make it as a tr- as a Canadian artist, unless you're someone like Drake, you know. But one thing I do want to ask, man, just being a Latino MC, like, is, is it actually harder to actually break yourself as an artist, just just being like two different nationalities? Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't really think that really comes into play um, in Toronto anyway. And the Toronto hip hop scene is just it's a it's a mix of of everything, you know, already. So. Yeah, I don't really, yeah, I don't really pay too much attention to that. But um, there isn't, there isn't really a lot of Latino MCs that I could think of in Toronto. Um, che Uno is one of them. That's my boy. Shout out to Che Uno out in uh, Toronto. There. Um, who else? Yeah, there's there's a couple of DJs and producers, but yeah, it's it's a blend. And also, man, you were actually a member of the duo uh, Ill Gotten. I was wondering, how did yourself and the other member get connected, man? And of course, what's the story behind that phenomenal hip hop duo? So, fun 
funny enough, uh, we met online actually on a, on a I forget what website it was. It was a blog that we used to visit, and uh, just randomly in the chat room, just talking shit back and forth. And uh, also a Latino dude that was uh, he was actually out in Puerto Rico when we first met, and um, yeah, we just you know connected. He said he made beats and shit, and you know, I was like, yeah, I rap a bit here and there. And then uh, he sent me some beats. One thing turned into another. And then that was that was a long time ago, before El Gotten ever came into play. Um, I was uh, doing those albums with Chief Foresight uh, under Dangerous Goods. And what was the last album we did? It was like 2015. So I had been in like a five-year hiatus since 2015. I didn't really do anything until last year like I had done like a single here a single there collaborations and whatnot but not a not an album of my own and uh we connected again he had moved to Boston apparently and he was back making beats and he was like yo I got all these beats yo check it out he sent me some beats and, and that was that we connected again and we were like yo let's let's do something a whole project together and uh Phil Gotten was formed and I got to ask you as well, man, when you said you took a little bit of a hiatus there, like what, what actually made you decide to, you know, not really do an album for that long? Honestly, I, I just, there's no inspiration. I just didn't feel inspired. Like, there's, yeah, I don't know. It was like a, it wasn't writer's block because I still wrote, you know, to instrumentals here and there, but yeah, I don't know. I just just a bit of a break, I guess. I just didn't really feel inspired to, to create anything until I connected with my boy, Ache, again. And I gotta say, man, it sounds completely understandable. You know, I think every artist, they always go through that that phase at least once or twice within their career, man, where they just want to oh, be like... Oh, for you know, sure, yeah. But hey, I'm glad you're back doing it, man, because you are a phenomenal oh. hip-hop artist, man, and you're most definitely making some waves out here in Canada. I appreciate that. Thank you. And the one song, man, that really actually drew me to your music, man, was that actually dropped December 19th of 2020, man. Ill-gotten, Simply Perfect, featuring DJ TMB, man. I was wondering, what's the story behind that, man? Because obviously it's wrestling, <laughs> yeah. right? But what made yeah, you guys decide to make a right, Mr. Yeah. Perfect tribute? So, um, yeah, I've just been, you know, since I was a kid, I was a huge wrestling fan and whatnot. Mr. Perfect was is my favorite wrestler. And, uh, yeah, I just like, fuck, I want to nerd out on something. I heard this beat that uh, my buddy had flipped. I, I, I said it jokingly. I'm like, yo, we should flip the Mr. Perfect beat. And uh, he sent it to me, and I was like, fuck it, it's happening. And I got to say, man, as, as a wrestling fan, once you heard that, you're probably like, you know what? This sounded like a terrible idea, but then you heard the beat, and you're like, you know what, man, I could do this. And I gotta say, you guys did a phenomenal job, man. We've actually been yeah. playing that into the in, in the radio station's rotation, man, and we've been having requests for that joint. I'm not even lying to you, man. Like people are loving that shit. That's awesome. That's good to hear. <laughs> and I really do also love as well that you actually put Mean Gene Okerlund in there, man. You know, God bless his soul. Yeah, I had to. Uh, I did my homework a bit, you know, with the. Uh with what I wanted to say and whatnot, um, you know, talking about his vignettes and all that. But yeah, it was uh, it was definitely fun nerding out on that. <laughs> and I have to ask you as well, man, do you plan on nerding out as well for another song? Like, because obviously you touch base on the 80s there, man. Do you ever plan on touching base, at, like going from the Golden Age era to like the Attitude Era? Uh, so I kind of, uh, like what are you talking about, wrestling-wise? Like wrestling-wise, like obviously song-wise, you know? You know what I mean? Like paying homage to another 90s wrestler? Um, actually, I was actually thinking about doing something similar with uh, a different wrestler. I'm not going to say who, but uh, yeah, I was maybe even doing like a little EP of not just wrestlers, but other figures from back in the day. I think that would be actually pretty cool, man, because it's, it's something different, you know. Well, unfortunately, with today's music, everybody sounds the same or tries to sound the same, right? So I think yeah. that right there will stick out like a sore thumb, but in a positive way. Especially when it comes to new hip-hop. New hip 
but also the same, like all the stuff on the radio and TV anyway. But also, man, I noticed as well that you actually did a great extensive amount of work with the individual by the name of DJ Merciless. I was wondering, how did yourself and Merciless actually get connected? Like, what's the story behind that formation? So, uh, I just reached out to him, basically, on, on Instagram. And uh, we follow each other, you know. We like each other's calls and share and whatnot. And I was just like, yo, are you down to do some cuts on this track? And uh, he hit me back right away pretty much and he said he was down and that was that and I gotta say as well man because I, I looked at the, your guys' track record you guys have done a lot of work do you guys have any new future projects currently in the works right now? Uh, with Merciless? Uh, correct yeah uh, nothing that we've talked about but I've I've been uh, I've been trying to put together a project with, uh, with a couple of different DJs from Toronto and he'd definitely be on that list. And also, man, on January 29th of 2021, you actually dropped a single, Older and Wiser. I was wondering, what's the story behind that song? And of course, where can our listeners buy or stream themselves a copy today? So, uh, that track, I mean, it's, it's out on Bandcamp. Um, I don't think, I think it's just available for, for streaming. Um, because I haven't actually dropped the album yet that track is going on so um yeah but that's out there for everyone to stream probably going to put it on all the digital platforms like spotify apple music and all that but um that track came about so i'm a big fan of frankenstein now if you don't know who frankenstein he's an og toronto producer made some of the dopest instrumentals and uh I seen him on Instagram. I was like, what? I didn't even know he had an account. And apparently he had just started the account. So I hit him up. You know, I told him I was a big fan of his work and if he was down to, you know, work on something together. And he hit me back. And he's like, yeah, let's, let's do something, you know. Hit me up with a couple of beats. And as soon as I heard that instrumental, I was just, you know, it feels corny, but the tracks write themselves when it's when you feel the beat, you know. Oh man, I remember when Frankenstein. I think it was like back in two thousand, man. He actually dropped the projects. It was like a little vinyl, man. I don't even know how I got my yeah. hands on it, yeah. man. But that guy is a genius. Yeah, yeah, he's a great producer, and he's built that rapping too. Oh, man, I most definitely agree on that. Like, So I have to ask you, man, since you got, you're got you connected with Frankenstein, man, do you think he's actually going to like produce your brand new record? Because I think that right there, man, would most definitely take Hazardous and jump you right to the top of the map. Yeah, uh, that would be nice. Um, that would have to be something in the future. I'm like pretty pretty busy this year. I'm doing a project with Pache, uh, the El Gun, which is, will be our, our follow-up to last year's album. Um, I got another project, uh, it's going to be songs from a bunch of different Toronto producers, that Frankenstein track is going to be one of them, and then I got two more projects, so well, four projects this year. <laughs> Man, it most definitely but, sounds yeah, like that you're would, busy. That would be great, I'd, I'd love to make an entire album with Frankenstein, no doubt. And also, man, that actually like is kind of like answer like, in a way answers my next question, man. Because what I always do with my interviews is I always ask individuals if there's anything I missed during the interview or anything else you still want to talk about or promote. But other than those four projects, man, is there anything else you do want to talk about or promote when we start mm -hmm. here live on Outlaw Radio FM? Well, I mean, the last two albums I, I dropped uh, last year, those are I'm still pumping those. Um, if you want to check them out, they're both on Bandcamp. Um, you can check it out, hazardous.bandcamp.com. Uh, the A's are the number four instead of A's. And, uh, yeah, Little Guns Obtained Illegally is on there. And my other EP that I did after that, entitled Perilous Sounds, that I did with uh, a buddy of mine out in Colombia. That's just really cool, man. What was it like actually working with an international artist like so far out? Because Colombia versus Canada, man. Like, how did you guys actually get connected? Obviously, the internet, but how how did you guys go yeah. about getting that, making that happen? The, the, the same way, um, an artist 
did uh, some logo. No, was it a logo? No, he did some artwork to me. And, you know, we just started talking. He's like, yo, uh, my friend makes beats. And I'm like, all right, tell him to hit me up. You know, just whatever. And sure enough, he sent me some, some instrumentals, and it's, you know, the kind of beats that I like, that old school boom bat, mostly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we connected. He sent me some beats. We were, you know, traded back and forth, verses and, and all that. And then uh, we ended up mixing and mastering the album as well. But also, I has just this is the time of interview, man, that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to uh, give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. But, of course, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated. Everything hazardous if they're not already doing so. All right. Uh, well, first of all, shout-out to Ache. He's listening. Um, that's my partner right there, Bill Gotten. Um... Shout out to Chief Foresight. I haven't seen you in a minute. Uh, I hit you up. I called you. Left you voicemails. You know, call me back. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram. That's pretty much the only social platform that I really use. Um, yeah, you can hit me up on there. The name's Hazardous. Again, the A's are fours. And uh, yeah. And I gotta say, man, it was an absolute honor to welcome a fellow Canadian artist, man, on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM, man. You know, like I like I said, I love interviewing people from the States and all over, man, but I really enjoy when I can help out Canadian hip-hop culture, man. So it was an honor, man, and anytime you need any sure exposure, that. don't hesitate to hit me up, man. I got you. For sure, I will. I gotta say, Hazardous, man, stay safe out there in Toronto, and most definitely have yourself a wonderful night. You too, man. Take care. You as well.